we've done a lot of talking about inking lately, um, and I have inked simple figures pretty often. We've done detailed shibbies. Um, I can't remember us doing dots for eyes, but that doesn't come up too often. What I wanted to talk about today was inking a more detailed illustration. So here I have the pencils for Kara coming out of some tall grass. And um, as you can see, there's a lot of elements. There are some daisies in the background and there are some little purple flowers towards the front. And uh, if you are unfamiliar with inking or if you don't do a lot of it, you may find it really intimidating. I know I did when I was first getting used to it. So today we're going to be using a Sailor Mitzel Ida. You can find a link to where to buy these in the description below. I can only think of one place and unfortunately that's jet pins. I usually prefer to sh shop around, but um, it seems like there is only one source if you're in the US. And we're pretty much gonna be focusing on the littler, the smaller of the two tips. And I've already sketched everything out fairly tight. Um, this is going to end up being a marker illustration, so I am gonna want to do a lot of the work with my color instead of all black and white. So we really just kind of want a nice open line art. And what I usually do is I start with foreground things first. Like these flowers here in the foreground, and that's gonna be overlapping Kara. So what I do is foreground, um, and overlapping first. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink all of the flowers in this bottom row that pretty much cover up the other flowers or cover up Kara. And then I'll get back to you guys. So we've got the first row of those little purple wildflowers that I'm going to be rendering colored in. And the next layer would probably be to render Kara because she's right behind that first layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And if you're interested in learning how to ink characters, please watch some of my other videos um, where I can explain it in more detail. I will say though, that when inking the figure in a detailed illustration, especially if the figure has a lot of detail going on, like this water bottle, for example, it helps to break things up into smaller shapes and just focus on getting those done before trying to ink the whole. You can always go back and um, add another layer of um, like line width to your drawing if something doesn't stand out enough or if it gets kind of mixed in with the crowd. And if that becomes an issue in this, I will show you guys how I do that. So right now we have a bit of a visual conflict going on and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. This flower here is pretty much the same lime weight as the bottle it's in front of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up the line weight a little bit on the flower so it appears to be in front of the bottle. Another simple way to imply that something is in front of something else is simply by casting a shadow onto that object.
All right, so we're at the part that is always the trickiest. We're at the face. Um, and usually when I'm advising people on inking, I do say to do the face first um, so that the face basically gets your best effort. And I, I had actually taken a break for a couple hours, ate some dinner, feeling a little bit more refreshed. So now is a good time to do the face. In general, though, when you're doing a detailed illustration with a lot of overlapping, you do want to focus on your forefront, foremost objects first. So like I said, these flowers, then Kara, then maybe some of the background flowers, then the daisies. Now that we've got the basically the foreground finished, if I want to take time right now to do some flowers behind her, now would be a good time to do that. So I'm going to draw a few in just to sort of fill in the picture plane a little bit more. And now I'll go ahead and start inking them and then the daisies. pieces like this, the further back you pull in the picture plane, the further back in the background, the less detail things are going to have. Even with something that has fairly open line work like this, you need to pull back your detail as you recede into the distance. pretty much have everything inked in. I think though I want to add some more of those sort of silhouetted little purple flowers into the background just to sort of you know bring the two together. Um, and when you're working on these sort of pieces you will notice things that you know you want to change on the fly or you want to correct or you want to add to um, and it really helps to sort of ink the portion you're okay with and then go from there. At least that's what I've found. Um, I tend to make a lot of corrections on the fly. So for me, this is a method that works uh, really well. And it's important to keep in mind that if you're doing watercolor or alcohol markers on top of something like this, you can't use correctional fluid to fix your line art until the end. Um, I am using markers with this as well as spray inks and correctional fluid like Signo's white gel pen will leave a resist. And I uh, did a video the other night with um, Copic Opaque White. I covered up an area that just got badly discovered, discolored when my uh, frisket failed to sort of hold the brush o back from saturating the, the paper. and. Uh, I was able to color over the opaque white, but it, it still looks very much like a correction and it still looks 
um, like not great. Like it looks better than it did, so I'm happy about that, but it doesn't look as nice as I would have liked. And I'm bringing that up only because um, if you were to make your corrections right now, you wouldn't have the option of deciding not to, right? I know that doesn't make sense to some of you who are just sort of getting started with this, but those of you who've been doing it for a little while kind of understand what I mean. Sometimes when you finish coloring something, the colors do such a good job that you don't even notice any of the flaws that might have been in your line art. So you opt not to correct those flaws because they're no longer a problem for you, saving you some time. If you correct them at this stage, they will always be apparent. So even if there are areas that I would like to nitpick and sort of massage into place, I'm going to have to wait until the end to do that. Anyway, I finished inking this piece. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that um, sort of demystified how to handle how to handle inking um, complicated pieces. You do it in stages. You take breaks in between if you need to. And you save your corrections for the very end. Um, I'm Becca Hilburn from Nato Soup Studio. I hope you guys had a great day. If you have any questions, questions, please remember to leave them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, now would be a great time to do so, especially if you enjoy videos like this. Um, I post once a week, often more often than that, with reviews, unboxings, tutorials, and demonstrations, all in to help you become an artist, an illustrator, or a comic artist like myself. Um, if you enjoy content like this and you want to help make more happen, you can do that by checking out my Patreon, patreon.com slash soup. And for seven years worth of content like this, please check out my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. So I'll see you guys later, uh, hopefully when we're finished this piece together using alcohol markers and spray inks. I hope you guys have a great day. Goodbye!